Hi everybody, uh, today I'm going to look at the Nikon F501 autofocus camera which was Nikon's first SLR to have an integrated autofocus motor. The original box it came in and some of the contents are you've got a strap, and a star in, inside, some paperwork, the dealer record. I don't have the date of purchase unfortunately and the uh, original instruction manual and inside we've got the camera and the bag and it came with a nice black body cap I'm going to show you the controls and features of the camera and uh, the way it works with the flash and a couple of lenses. So first of all I'm going to run through the controls. Looking at the top, you've got the power on switch and shutter button, which has a lock, a single advance and a continuous advance option. You've got a audible beep which you can turn on or off for various warnings. You've got a slider for the rewinding the film and a button which you have to press as well so you can rewind the film. You've got the shutter dial which has settings from B for bulb and then from one to two thousandths of a second. In red is highlighted the flash sync speed of 125th of a second. And then we've got various automatic modes, an aperture priority, and three program modes. One's a normal program mode, you've got a program high mode, which will attempt to set a higher shutter speed, and then a P dual mode, which is a combination of the two program modes and it reads information from the lens through the contacts and sets a shutter speed accordingly. Got the hot shoe on the top which can take a TTL lens, uh, sorry, TTL flash and uh, if you've got the flash with the AF beam uh, it can be used for autofocus in the dark on the left here you've got the rewind crank and lever. You've got a exposure compensation dial and you're pressing the button and you've got a plus to minus two stops of exposure compensation. A little red LED here for a warning which is, is displayed in various ways self timer, end of film etc. You've got the ISO speed film setting which you lift this outer ring and turn and set it to the desired ISO or you can set it to a DS, DX setting as well. <coughs> the viewfinder which gives you approximately 92% of the coverage what you will get on the film. To fit a film you pull up the rewind crank, there's no button you have to press, you just pull it up, fully back opens, and on the left here we can see at the film you've got the DX contacts so it can read the ISO automatically. You've got some contacts here for if you fit a data back to the F501, and when you fit a film, you pull the leader of the film over to the red mark and you can close the back and then when you switch the power on by lifting this, turn it to the drive mode you press the shutter button it winds on the film automatically to the first frame and the frame counter actually advances even without filming you've also got a 
film advance wheel here guide window I should say which as the film advance on the advance sprocket it actually turns to show you the films are doing okay so obviously the rewind crank will turn as well but the advantage of this little window is when you rewind the film you know when the film end has come off to the off the advanced sprocket because obviously that wheel will then stop turning. We've also got a film window here which shows that the actual cartridge is fitted. Now the F501 as I say is Nikon's first autofocus integrated camera. Uh, it also has a built-in motor drive but it wasn't Nikon's first camera with the motor drive because the 301 came out a year before so this was in 1986 the F301 came out in 1985 it's basically the same camera without autofocus and again it has motor drive and this was the first SLR actually to incorporate a built-in motor drive and a built-in automatic DX uh, coded setting for the film. Now the first autofocus SLR or it's integrated into the body was actually the Minolta 7000 which is this camera which sold very well and was quite more expensive than the uh, Nikon. Uh, I'll probably do a review of this some other time. So back to the 501 at the front You've got the blinking light for the self timer. You've got a auto exposure lock button. For looking at the exposure, use a centre weighted metering by the way. You've also got an auto focus lock button when it's in continuous focus mode. And you've got the self timer start, which is 10 seconds button, which is inset in uh, on this one. See so on the 301 it's slightly different setup. <clears throat> You've got the automatic exposure lock on a lever and the self timer a button in the middle of that. On this side of the lens mount you've got a uh, it doesn't have a PC sync socket by the way, it's got a remote socket here for remotely controlled shutter release lens release button obviously and then you've got the settings for the focusing S a single focusing and in that mode the um, you have to have focus before the actual shutter will fire continuous mode where the focusing will change all the time according to the subject and you can actually fire the shutter at any time in that mode you've got a manual mode as well Lens compatibility uh, for the focusing it requires a AFD lens and it drives the lens through the protruding uh, little screw there which drives the screw in the, in the lens. One anom anomaly to that is the fact that it will actually run and focus with this lens which is a 80mm lens for the F3 a F camera, which was uh, Nikon's first production autofocus camera. Uh, even though this doesn't have the screw thread, it will actually uh, autofocus with this camera. So uh, I can only imagine it's because it was their first autofocus body, they wanted it to work with their first autofocus lens. A normal FD lens has this little screw drive here which is turned by the motor in the body. This is a 50mm AFD lens and when you're working in program mode then you set it to the minimum ap aperture which is f22 in this case it's 
also highlighted in uh, orange as the markings on the shutter dial as well is so <clears throat> the like I say the motor drive is built in which advances the film to the first frame and then it can fire uh, in continuous mode up to two and a half frames per second when it gets to the end you get a blinking red light on there and a beep if you've got this button switched on and you then need to rewind manually by uh, sliding the rewind slider across, pressing the button and lifting up the crank and rewinding manually. So during normal shooting uh, what you see in the viewfinder is a shutter speed on the right hand side via a red LED and it displays the shutter speed that the camera is going to set what you don't see is the aperture through the viewfinder in any mode at all there's no ADR window and at the bottom of the viewfinder you see a autofocus confirm light which is green when focus has been made and if you manually focus in or it's searching then you'll see red arrows to the left and to the right of that saying which way the lens should be turned to focus. You can of course use AI, AIS lenses on this and use manual focus. Um, so that's mainly the camera, the, oh the battery pack on the bottom. The original battery pack which is this one screw it from there and it takes four AAA batteries and you just flick that out sorry you actually pull this tag to remove it and according to Nikon's literature uh, you'll be able to run around 60 36 exposure films on one set of AAA batteries and uh, I find that slightly th thinking they uh, expecting too much of it <laughs> but you can fit a high rated battery pack to this that's the standard one but you can get a other battery pack which was people fitted I've got, got, got one fitted to this uh, 301 and this takes four AA batteries it's called an MB3 and it comes in two parts as well as the bottom cover being uh, deeper it comes with this plate which the screw screws into the tripod mount on the uh, 501 and it gives you another tripod mount there you don't need the inner holder for the batteries you just basically then slide the batteries straight into that and uh, Nikon claim it will give you about 180 rolls of 36 exposure film with uh, AA batteries now flash on the 501 it's through the lens and with a suitable speed light you can use a autofocus assist beam like on this SB28 so in a dark situation that will assist the focusing and I say flash fires at one one two fifths of a second I'll just fit that on camera on flash and say so you get through the lens flash you can ignore those on the back of the display on this one um, and you just you can set it to program mode or aperture priority and when you press the shutter halfway down you'll get a flash ready confirmation 
in the viewfinder as well as on the back of the flash and it will focus and uh, you can take a picture and early flashes do work with it as well and later flashes so there you go that's the 501 um, nice little camera so quite popular for them they brought out later models next was the 401 which had a, a built in flash and uh, I think they slightly improved the autofocusing as well so there you go, that's the F, Nikon F501 I'll uh, be doing some other reviews soon hopefully not try and leave it so long and uh, I'll catch you later